Hello! In this video, we will continue to talk about working with the color grid. I will consider the main practical tasks that can be solved with this unique tool. If you haven't seen the video called Basics of Working with the AB Color Grid in 3D LUT Creator, then I highly recommend watching it. There are a lot of problems that can be solved with the help of the main color grid. These are repainting objects, removing color casts and reflexes, separate coloring of shadows and highlights, darkening and lightening of individual hues, neutrals coloring, saturation dependent selective adjustment of individual hues, color harmonies, final image cleaning from unwanted colors, color calibration using color targets. Before starting the practice, let's look at what happens to the color of the image when we shift the color grid. For example, by changing the color of the object. I will open the image with color gradients. The red color is located directly under the color ray on the grid. So if I need to repaint it, then I will use only one color ray. And now, let's try to repaint the purple gradient. The repainting is not going well. The gradient has stripes of different colors, and when I repaint it to certain colors, it even loses saturation. Why is this happening? For a better explanation, I will open the vector scope. The purple color is located between the color rays on the grid. When I rotate the ray around the center of the grid, the color between the rays begins to stretch. When the color ray turns more than 90 degrees, the color moves to the neutral. The color on the grid was midway between the rays. Now it is here, closer to the center of the grid. This is why we lost the saturation. In order to avoid this, you need to rotate the two rays so that the purple color is between them. So, here is the advice. To repaint the color you need to move the grid points around the region that your color is located. Let's start to practice. Let's change the color of the car. At first look, it may seem that there are only a few colors in this image, but there are actually many more. With a simple repainting with two rays, we get a color stroke on the reflection under the car. To avoid this, you have to move all the points that are responsible for the color of the car and the reflection. I fix the colors that should not change and select those that I will repaint. Done. Let's try on the next photo to repaint the roof. The roof color lies between two rays. If I rotate them, the roof will change its color, but I also change the color of the flowers. What should I do in this case? It is necessary to change the grid size. Let's try to repaint now. The result is much better. Now we have touched only a bush under the street lamp, which has the same color as the roof. When you darken or lighten individual colors, you need to influence the entire spectrum of the color. For example, let's darken the sky. Note that when darkening the color of a single ray, we get artifacts. If you darken the entire spectrum of sky colors, there will be no artifacts. Here is the before and after. When removing the color casts and reflexes, you need to act in the same way as when repainting. Let's consider the following example. The customer has asked me to remove the blue color from the furniture in this photo. I select three color rays and rotate them towards the desired color. And now I adjust the saturation, something like this. Let's zoom in the image and check the quality of repainting. There is a transition to the arm of the chair. Let's find where it is on the grid. Look, now I'll move the ray in different directions. Now it turns blue, now greener. Now it becomes oversaturated or becomes gray. I find the most optimal position. Here is the whole view, the before and the after. At 100% scale, it is clearly visible that we save micro contrast and do not lose the texture of the upholstery. You can remove the green reflection from the skin using the same technique. In this image, there are areas with green skin. To fix them, I move the color ray with a yellow-green color towards the skin color. Done. Compare the before and after. Let's see the whole image. 
Now, this area of the background was also influenced. It became warmer. I changed the grid size and try to work with a smaller color range. Let's increase the fragment of the image. This is the before, and that is the after. The background doesn't change. Let's consider the examples of working with a double grid on the following image. If you watched the Tron movie, there were two main colors, which denoted the main character and antagonist, turquoise and orange. That is, it was a classic teal and orange. I load as a reference this picture. The car has the blue color, so let's make it turquoise, as in the reference. I think you will not have problems with doing it. I select the ends of the blue rays and rotate them around the center of the grid in the direction of the desired color. And I increase the brightness. Done. We changed the blue to turquoise with ease. But the correct repainting in the orange is not so easy as you may think. Let's paint the highlights in the orange color using the same technique. Formally, we did everything right. But if we compare the resulting image with the reference, then you can figure out that we missed something. Professional artists know that when painting a cold glow, the brightest spot of the glare should be left almost white with a light bluish, or as in our case, the reference has a turquoise hue. To create a bright warm glow, you need to make the transition from orange red to yellow in the brightest spot of the glare. And we see it on the reference. Note that the edging of the highlights has a reddish color and the warm glow in the brightest spot is light yellow. That is, we need to create this transition in 3D LUT Creator. I keep our first version of the correction. I go to the menu, Edit, Versions, and select Version 2 to make a new correction. I turn on the double grid. The double grid allows you to work separately with the shadows and highlights of the image. Now I will paint the dark part of the glow in a reddish hue. and the light part in the yellow. I adjust the influence on the shadows and highlights with this slider. If you hold the Alt key, you will see a border between the upper and the lower grid. Done. Let's compare now with the first version. It seemed good to us before we did this edit with the double grid. Just compare how the car looks hotter and angrier here. I think the comments are superfluous. Please do not confuse the work with a double grid with split toning in Lightroom or other programs. During split toning, you paint all the shadows of the image in one color and all the lights in the other. Let's compare the before and after again. On the double grid, I painted the dark blue in a red and the light blue in yellow. I did not influence the other colors. It is impossible to make such edits using split toning, so you cannot do it in Lightroom or Photoshop. Let's try to work with the skin on a double grid now. In this photo, after retouching the skin, it has even color and the picture has lost its depth. Let's try to fix it. I choose the MABE color model. This model does not take into account our perception of brightness for different colors. Therefore, if I make the color greener on the grid, it will also become lighter. In this case, it will be useful because it is possible to raise the contrast. I make the highlights on the skin greener and they become lighter. And the shadows I make slightly redder and they get darker at the same time. Let's compare the before and after. That's all. In the next video, I will consider working with saturation, neutrals, and creating color harmonies. Do not forget to like and subscribe to stay tuned. See you in the next video.